Okay, in this video, we are going to review a recent video published by Dave Ramsey regarding infinite banking and how it is a scam. So if you had a chance to view the video, you likely saw that the talk is mainly about whole life insurance, but the infinite banking concept does 100% revolve around a dividend paying whole life insurance policy, which we all know Dave Ramsey's thoughts and opinions on whole life insurance. So we are going to break down this video. We're going to look at several clips. We are going to begin with the theme of the video being infinite banking and really how and why Dave views it as a scam. So the video began with a caller talking to Dave. Let's check that clip out. And I have term life insurance. I've been anti whole life, but he presented me with this infinite banking concept. Jesus, um, you're I kidding have excess me. Money. Yeah, I have excess money in a savings account and looking to rebalance my portfolio to get it to work a little bit harder. Wow. But my risk tolerance is a little bit low. And he showed me how you can do this where you overfund the whole life policy, yeah. you can access the money, you break even in year seven, and then yeah. the dividend outruns what you put into it. Yeah, it's a it sad. doesn't seem like a terrible idea in that regard, but I just wanted your your take on yeah. why you know that might not be the best. Okay, so we see the caller asking Dave about a, a whole life insurance policy, specifically an overfunded whole life insurance policy that has cash value he has access to, breaks even around year seven. What that means is by year seven, if he's paid in $10,000 per year, by year seven, he's paid in a total of $70,000. He would now have $70,000. That is decent with a whole life insurance product. However, you can get it to break even much earlier than that and have much stronger cash values. But what's interesting is when the topic was brought up, infinite banking. So the caller said, hey, the agent pitched me with something a little bit outside of the box, infinite banking. So let's just hit on this point right here. What is infinite banking and how does it relate to a whole life insurance policy? Well, really what infinite banking does is teach one how to use a dividend paying whole life insurance policy as a financing tool. The best means to illustrate this is often with real estate. So for example, let's pretend that you or I own a piece of property and that property appreciates at 5% every single year like clockwork. Regardless of what happens in the economy, the real estate market, your, your property, your real estate just goes up by 5% every single year. Now, if you own that property free and clear, will you still receive the 5% depreciation on the entire home value? Of course. Now, if you have a loan or mortgage outstanding against that property, will you continue to receive the 5% depreciation on your entire property value or just the remaining equity? Well, I still get it on the entire home value. That's how real estate works. That's why many people are attracted to it. So how that ties to infinite banking and whole life insurance, infinite banking teaches one how to take control of the banking function in their life, is you will find a whole life insurance product works in the exact same manner. Specifically, I'm referring to the cash value here in the sense that once a dollar passes through the cash value of a life insurance policy, regardless if I just let that dollar sit and grow or if I elect to borrow against it, I will continue to earn interest, dividends and interest on my entire bucket of money as if I never touched it in the first place. So to illustrate, if I had $100,000 in cash value, earning 5%, if I let that money sit and grow, I'd earn 5%. If I elect to loan or borrow out $50,000, Interest would be due on the loan, just like it would be if I had a mortgage outstanding, which does go to the insurance company. However, I would continue to earn that 5% on the full $100,000 as if I never touched it in the first place, which we will provide more detail on this in a minute. So that is in a nutshell, 
how infinite banking works. And we wanted to be sure to lay that out. This way, as we continue to progress through the call, we want to see if the title of this video, Infinite Banking, is addressed by Dave or not. So when the concept is brought up, when the caller asks about infinite banking, what happens here? Well, Dave immediately defers with a question. He's selling a dividend? Is this an insurance guy or a financial advisor? That is the immediate go-to question. Let's look at the clip quick. Well, go. the, the problem is that you, where it gets confusing it is that, um, God, he's selling a dividend. A financial advisor? Is this, a, this is an insurance guy. Well, he's he's both. They have, you know, it's one of the bigger companies. Um, they yeah, like have Northwestern a, Mutual or Prudential. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He's an insurance guy. He's not a financial advisor. Okay. I was about to okay. Say. So, because those are both mutual companies. Now, uh, there are two types of life insurance companies: mutual and stock. Okay. Okay. So, in that clip, we see does not address the topic of infinite banking, immediately asks the caller if the agent he's working with is an insurance agent or a financial advisor. And the response was, well, he's both. And Dave said, yeah, he works for one of the bigger companies like Prudential or Northwestern Mutual. And he continues to go on talking about how Northwestern Mutual and Prudential are two of the biggest companies in the country, in the world actually, because they are massive sized companies and that they are both mutual companies. So if you were to look up Prudential, you will actually find that they are a stock company. Now, why that's important is because Dave continues to go into the difference between a mutual and a stock company. There are several differences here, which he gets a lot of pieces accurate as far as talking about the differences between a mutual and stock company. There's more information, but we'll get into that later. However, it's important to note that Prudential is a stock company. In fact, let's take a look here. So there we go, Prudential Financial Insurance Company. Don't need to go much further than just the first page of Google. There is their stock price. Looks like they're doing well today on December 1st. So he then goes into how dividends work with a life insurance policy and really that dividends are a deliberate overcharge from the insurance company. That's, when, that's why when we receive a dividend, really what it is is a refund from the insurance company of premiums that they had already overcharged us for per the language from the IRS, which is accurate there. That is how and why cash value life insurance remains tax-free in a lot of ways. Why so many people are attracted to cash value life insurance is that if we do everything properly, we can grow that cash value and access that cash value 100% tax-free. Now, a couple items on this point. With the tax-favorable treatment, one, we mentioned we can access the funds completely tax-free, which we can. However, any life insurance policy can become classified as what is called a MEC. This stands for Modified Endowment Contract. If a life insurance policy becomes classified as a Modified Endowment Contract, the cash, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the cash value will grow tax deferred and anything I access in respect to the gains, I have to pay ordinary income tax on and an additional 10% penalty tax if I touch it prior to age 59 and a half. That is if I violate this limit and my policy now becomes a MEC. It is easy to avoid, but my point to mentioning this is yes, cash value life insurance policy is utilized tax-free and the langu language from the IRS states the reason why is due to the overcharge of, of premiums and a refunded dividend, which is just overcharged premiums. That is the language. However, it is that language so the product can still remain tax-free. Now, what's also interesting about this is if we go back to 2016 and several times before this date, there have been several attempts to change the tax laws on cash value life insurance. In 2016, when Trump ran for office in his campaign, I remember looking this up and everyone in the insurance industry knew this for the most part. 
it was stated that the rules on cash value life insurance would be adjusted in his new tax proposal, meaning he wanted to tax the cash values of life insurance policies. Now, what was so interesting is when he got into office, that was proposed, but it was pulled out so, so quietly. The new tax proposal or the revision, I should say, more or less stated cash value life insurance treatment will remain the same. Right, because what goes on as far as maintaining that cash value, that same treatment, keeping it tax-free is very, very valuable for people in Congress, lobbyists, big banks, corporations. The amount of money there is absurd. The ultra-wealthy, big banks and corporations have been using this forever. So changing that status would ruffle some feathers to put it lightly. So let's continue on here. On this point, he did talk about the dividends. He was accurate, but he left out the reason why it is considered a deliberate overcharge of premiums. That's important because that's where the tax favorability comes into play. Now, here he talks about policy loans. So let's look at the clip real quick. The caller had a question on this. Uh, you'll see the caller did not like the fact that he had to pay interest on his own money. Let's take a look. So, yeah. Yep. The thing I didn't love is, you know, you when you take the money back, you basically are paying an interest rate on it. But exactly. And are, who, whose money are, is this? Right. That you're right. borrowing, you're, you're borrowing your own money, and you're paying them interest. Yep. This is so infinite banking for them. Yeah. Yeah. The infinite banking yeah. concept is is old school, whole life, done poorly. You need a real financial advisor, not an insurance broker, that's trying to sell you a load of manure. Okay, so we see him talking about the loan interest. And this is something Dave has expressed several times over the years, anytime we see a video on whole life insurance, right? You have to pay interest on your own money when you borrow it, which is true, just like if we borrow against the equity in our property, we have to pay interest to who? The lender, that's 100% correct. However, if our property, our real estate continues to appreciate, we continue to earn that appreciation rate on the entire property, not just the remaining remaining equity. Let's take a look here at an example actually of exactly how policy loans work because this is a topic that is so, so interesting and transparency here is extremely valuable. So here is a policy, a high cash value policy where a 45 year old male opened the policy and paid into it $50,000 per year for five years. His goal was purely cash value. So on the left, we have an example where he just pays money in and lets it sit and grow. Year one, he's paid in 50,000. He has 47,000 right off the bat. By year three, he's paid in a total of $150,000, and he has $150,000, his break-even point. Continues to let it sit and grow. Here is his dividend column as well. The example on the right, exact same policy. You can see that by year three. Only here, he takes out a $200,000 loan. The question I will always ask if I'm you, if I'm the consumer is, hey, when I borrow against my life insurance policy, what is the impact of that policy loan? How does it affect my policy? Well, the gauge that determines how much I can borrow, how much equity I have access to is my cash value. So here you see the line reduce since I pulled $200,000. Compare that to this example. Now the company will continue to pay you dividends and interest on your full cash value, meaning the 53,000 remaining and the $200,000 as if you never touched it in the first place. How and why would an insurance company continue to do that? Well, two reasons why. One, there is an interest charge. You'll see the loan interest here on this particular example. The loan interest charge is 5%. The other reason, is they collateralize one's death benefit. The death benefit is really the liability that the insurance company has. Think of it this way. What is a life insurance company's first and foremost obligation? To pay life insurance claims. If I die with a loan outstanding, you'll notice I borrowed $200,000, my death benefit reduced by $200,000. 
If I die with a loan outstanding, the insurance company is on the hook for that much less. Now, paying back loans are optional. I do not have to do it. The interest would continue to accrue and you would see it slow down the cash value growth and also deduct from my death benefit each year if I did not pay it back. However, here, we are going to pay it back at 50,000 per year, which we can pay it back in any pattern or scale, any method that we want. We paid it back aggressively. If you tally up the payments, I borrowed 200, I paid back $229,000 approximately. This $28,975 was interest that went to the insurance company. If I stopped there, we'd make Dave look very good in the sense that I'm paying interest on my own money, which we are, just like borrowing against a piece of real estate. The thing is, let's look at the loan when everything's paid back. So the interest expense went to the company. When that loan balance is zero, here's my cash value. And the example when I just let it sit and grow, here's my cash value. Death benefits are identical as well. Look at the year that the loans were outstanding. And what do you notice about your dividends? Identical all the way through, meaning the company continued to pay the same dividend on any money in cash value and any money I had borrowed from the policy. Another way to put it is that there is no lost opportunity cost here. Things keep on going forward exactly what I want to see. So that is a quick overview of how policy loans work. We've got a, a lot more material if you'd like to dig in or you can reach out to us anytime as well. Let's continue on here. So he did mention something about infinite banking being old school whole life insurance done poorly. Now that comment I would disagree with. Uh, the reason why is when I think of an old school traditional whole life insurance product, I think of a policy where I pay a premium I have a death benefit and zero cash value right off the bat, nothing. Versus infinite banking, really what that has done extremely well, when you look at the concept as a whole, is bring attention to the fact that an individual can obtain a cash value life insurance policy and have cash value immediately. Soon as we start a policy, it can be cash rich. A quick example here, let's take a look. On the right, we see what is referred to by Dave as a load of manure. You'll see that in a little bit. His <laughs> comment on, that is his comment on old school whole life insurance. And why I mention that, you see a 50 year old male. This is the same company, same product, same design, same health rating, $100,000 in, next to nothing right off the bat, 13,000 in there. What's highlighted in yellow is his break even point. Then you see, a standard infinite banking policy, why we called it a standard policy. This is very similar, likely very similar to what that caller was proposed. What I base that off of is this represents a break even point of year seven, just like the caller stated by year seven, I've paid in $700,000 and I have just over $700,000. But then the thing is, you can also take a policy and optimize the cash value. We're right off the bat, same dollar figure going in, 88% in year one, break even point year four, positive from that point forward. This policy produces a net internal rate of return between four, and four to five percent, which is a tax-free internal rate of return as well. That's after all the insurance expenses, mortality charges, all that good stuff. So as far as an old school whole life insurance product to stay in point here, this is what I would refer to a policy that has nothing right off the bat. So let's continue on here. Let's look at the next clip regarding whole life insurance being expensive. This was an important point he raised because whole life insurance product, I would agree with him in some respect here that if I purchase it just for a death benefit, it is quite expensive. Let's take a look. And so, yeah, the other thing is, is that your cash values that are sitting there all die with you. So whatever cash you put into this is equal zero at your death because they only pay the face value. Prue does not have a policy. 
Northwestern Mutual does not have a policy that pays more than the face value except Universal Life Bs, which are not in infinite banking products. And Universal Product B is where they charge more than they usually charge, which basically buys the insurance so they can still keep your money is the way the math actually works on this. So you're dealing with one of the most expensive insurance products in the marketplace if you're dealing with either one of those two companies. I would stay completely away from both of them. They're... Um, Everyone in the financial field except people that work for them, we all think they're a joke. Okay, so Dave raised a number of points here. Let's go through a couple key points. One, he mentioned when you die, the company keeps the cash value. So how whole life insurance works. We've got videos directly studying and explaining how whole life insurance works regarding the cash value and death benefit and how the net amount paid out to beneficiaries is actually greater in the death benefit. But I would encourage you to watch that video if you want a full explanation on that. To give a quick example, let's look at this example here. So what happens as my cash value grows over time? Cash value is growing. When he pays nothing else in, not even the premium, he stopped after 10 years, death benefit is increasing as well. I have access to my cash value all the way through. That is the equity I can access. That's my safe area to position money. But if I die, the greater amount is passed to my heirs, my beneficiaries, in the death benefit. It continues to appreciate over time. A simple way to explain it is that they grow together. So, if I die, on paper, the amount paid out to my beneficiaries is the net death benefit, but that net death benefit does include the growth on cash value over time. Very important to make that clear. Let's continue on. Then he mentioned Universal Life B products being the only products that pay both the cash value and death benefit at death. And then he mentioned Prudential and Northwestern Mutual both being mutual companies, again, offering the most expensive product. He's referring to whole life insurance here. Actually, what you can see on the subheading of the video is agent trying to sell me an overfunded whole life insurance product. But he talks about Prudential and Northwestern expensive product. But again, here's the point here. Prudential is a stock company. You'll see why I'm so adamant about that as we continue on in his video. But another thing, is that Prudential does not sell whole life insurance. When you look at Prudential as a company, they offer term life insurance and three different types of universal life insurance. In fact, let's take a look here because this is interesting. So before we had Prudential just there on our Google search here, does Prudential sell whole life insurance. And the answer we have, so according to Google, Prudential does not offer whole life insurance. Okay, so we've got it from them. Let's take a look just at Prudential's website. Let's go to the source as opposed to asking Google. Okay, so on Prudential's main website, let's click on life insurance. They are a massive insurance company. They've been around for a long time well rated. But let's talk about different life insurance coverages. That's great. Here we go. Find the right life insurance solution. Learn about term and permanent life insurance. Whoa. There we go. Term insurance, universal life insurance, indexed universal life insurance, and variable universal life insurance. So Dave's spending a lot of time talking about Prudential being one of the carriers, being a mutual company, which they're not, and offering whole life insurance, which they do not offer whole life insurance. There's a reason I'm leaning into this, which we're going to get into next. So let's talk about one thing as far as whole life insurance being an expensive product, because we mentioned earlier, if I purchase whole life insurance purely for the death benefit, it is expensive. I want to be aware of that. Now, the policy structure, which Dave touches on later, is critical here. So how does the policy structure impact the actual life insurance policy? Well, let's take a look. When we talk about policy structure, 
Couple of things we want to be aware of. With any whole life insurance policy, let's be clear here. What do I have? I've got my cash value, and then I have my death benefit. Okay. When I pay any amount of money into a policy, my money can go toward one of two areas at the end of the day. I can allocate money toward the insurance premium or toward what is called a paid up additions or PUA rider. Understanding the relationship of these two areas is critical. So let's simplify this a little bit. The premium piece I'll often refer to as the insurance expense and the PUA component, I will refer to often as a cash dump-in. So again, looking at the relationship of these two areas, how do they work? Dollars that go towards the premium. Let's assume I'm going to pay $1,000 per year into the premium component. What will happen in respect to my cash value is this, typically, I will see zero show up in cash value for the first year and with most products, the first and second year. The reason why is that the insurance company is going to overcharge me for the death benefit up front. That may purchase me perhaps $50,000 in actual life insurance. Now, as time passes, as I continue to make those premium payments, once I hit the third year with most products, I'll see that thousand I pay in comes back to cash value. That's money I can access, begins to yield dividends and interest, gets better and better. But right off the bat, I'm behind the eight ball, it takes time to pick up the pace. And that's why in that last example, we saw with $100,000 per year going in into that traditional policy, the one titled load of manure, took 11 years to break even. Versus money I pay towards the PUA component if I pay the exact same dollar amount down here, what I'll find is just about $1,000 will show up in cash value. That's money I can access. Begins to yield the guaranteed rate, often a 4%. And then also any dividends right off the bat. This is the key to accelerating the cash value on any life insurance policy, especially if we are being laser focused on the guarantees, prepping ourselves for a worst case scenario. The less money I put here and the more money I put here will accelerate the cash value growth. And then all of a sudden, I am mimicking what big banks, corporations, wealthy individuals that have used these products forever, I'm mimicking their exact strategy or very, very similar. Now, that will purchase me, the PUA component, some death benefit. If I paid in $1,000, I may see another $3,000 come back in life insurance. There is more to this. I would uh, refer you to our policy design video or structuring a policy for maximum cash value to get more details on this particular topic. Let's continue on here. So if we look at the next clip, Let's take a look regarding experts in the industry. We all think they're a joke. All of us. Anyone who's academically trained or has any kind of CFP or anything else, when, they, when someone says they work for Northwestern Mutual, we just kind of laugh and go, <laughs> yeah, right, you screw people every day. <laughs> yeah, so, dude, you need to get away from them, and you need to go get a real financial advisor that can help you do some real investing that takes into consideration your low risk tolerance. Low risk tolerance does not need to lead you to losing your money, 100% of the cash invested at death. Okay, so Dave talks about experts, individuals who are academically trained, kind of laugh off anyone who works for Northwestern Mutual or sells whole life insurance. You know, that piece right there, that may be true of some advisors and some people at Northwestern or other big companies might say the same back, right, about each other. That's what always happens in industries. Competition arises and they fight each other. The thing is that I like to see here is proof. Can we please have some proof of individuals that stated that? And can you prove out the scenario? Because what's so interesting is 
when you look at proof, earlier this year, we set up a plan for a bank. It was a cash value life insurance policy. What was so interesting about it, it was shortly after COVID had hit, lockdowns were beginning, the bank sends me a message, message and states, we've got a pile of money, we'd like to move into a product ASAP. The product that they wanted and where they moved that money was guess what? Cash value life insurance. They did that for a specific reason. It's been tested, they understood it, but boy, did they study it as well. The individuals I worked here worked with there were what I would consider experts. The CFO of a bank, and an executive whose former role was an examiner. Very, very bright when it comes to finance. Also, working with actuaries, CPAs, experts in the field of finance, understanding cash value life insurance, understanding other investments and such, individuals that do both. My thing is, do not put all of your money in cash value life insurance. Do not put all of your money in stocks and mutual funds. Understand the pros and cons of different products out there and then select the options that fit best for us rather than just say, my way is the best and everybody else stinks. Like, no, we don't want that kind of stuff. We want to peel the emotion out. Let me understand the product just like I can understand it if I shop on Amazon. Pretty transparent. Pros, cons, do I want it from this vendor or do I search and purchase it from someone else. Pretty simple. Let's continue on. Next part, Sanders Insurance. So let's listen to this, our next clip. So when you go to a quote service, like a Xander Insurance, and you get quoted on term life insurance, you're going to find no mutual companies in the 42 different companies that they give you a quote from yeah. because they're not no. competitive. That's it. Why? Because they charge more so they can give some of it to you back later and make you feel like that you got something. <laughs> that's really what it amounts to. And that's why you won't find them. They're not competitive. Yeah. Dave, you, you fired up about this one. Man, I tell you what, <laughs> pisses me off. Infinite banking my butt. Okay, so Dave feels very strongly about mutual companies like Northwestern Mutual and Prudential, extremely expensive here. And he states that if you were to quote term insurance on Xander's Quote Services, Xander Quote Services, which is a company he endorses, you will not find any mutual companies in their quote service. Of the 42 companies that are quoted, no mutuals will exist because they are too expensive. So this was interesting when I heard this. I'm like, okay, we sell a lot of life insurance, whole life and term. So I'd like to understand this because that goes completely against my understanding of the marketplace. So what I did was decide to quote myself, 32 year old healthy male, $1 million policy, 20 year term life insurance. So different companies we've got here, Protective, they are a stock company. We've got AIG, but then we've got Pacific Life. Is Pacific Life a mutual company or a stock company? Well, what we ran here is what is called a vital signs report. This is an independent vendor that gives a full disclosure report on insurance companies and financial institutions. Here we have Pacific Life. A lot of information regarding their ratings. We can get their, their an asset breakdown, but here's the main thing I want to look at. Stock company, right? So Dave is accurate so far. Let's continue on. Lincoln Financial Group. They are a stock company as well. SBLI, Savings Bank Mutual Life Insurance Company. Mutual Life Insurance Company. Okay, so we found one mutual in there thus far. Let's continue on. Behind Dave, we've got North American Insurance Company there. Let's take a look at them. North American Stock Company. Thus far, he's accurate. If we continue on, look at this. Prudential, <laughs> another stock company we see here. The quote actually continues on where we saw companies like Mutual of Omaha in there, which is also a mutual life insurance company. Point being is predominantly, I did see stock companies pitched in this example. However, mutual companies are sold, and he also talks about Prudential. Him talking about it, a mutual company, we see that they are actually a stock company. Let's continue on to our last point, right? So you've got to check your research here. Two points left, actually. Commissions, this will be quick. You know, this point he mentioned, 
commissions really being the only motivator for the agent selling a whole life insurance product. When we go back to the policy design, where we talked about money that can go toward the premium piece or the PUA component, if you recall that, and to maximize these policies, what we will always do, maximize the cash value that is, is reduce the premium as low as possible. So if and when we do that, what happens here, the premium is the number one driver of the commission. So naturally, if we are going to shrink that as low as we can, what's going to happen to the commission? It's going to be reduced as low as possible. When you look at big banks, corporations, wealthy individuals that have used this forever, many banks have this position, cash value life insurance, as the number one asset on their balance sheets. And they are not dumb in some respects, but they're not dumb, especially their executives. There's a reason for this. But the products that are set up for them are designed for maximum cash value. So if cash value or cash accumulation is a goal of mine when I purchase the product, reducing that commission will maximize the cash value of a product. And we've got several videos and case studies on that as well. The last thing here, this is more emotion where he talks about the gut feeling, right? That the caller had this gut feeling that something was wrong right? Pure emotion here. And we can really pitch that about any product or individual. The thing is, whenever we are looking at any product, any strategy, any move that we want to execute, what's important here? We need data and we need accurate information. That's how good decisions are made by us as individuals and companies. We need solid data. Where in some respects, you could say Dave has discounted himself in this video, is he constantly referred to Prudential being a mutual company and selling whole life insurance, neither of which are true. He talked about Xander's quote service, quoting only stock companies, not true. They also quote mutual life insurance carriers. So these are just some pieces that we've got a fact check to say, hey, is this a reputable source? or not with anyone. Now, this is not to completely discredit Dave. There's a lot of stuff that we've seen on him that I like where his strength, I would say, lies is really in teaching individuals how to be disciplined with personal finance and paying off debt. He's done a lot of good there. So we can certainly gather good from him. The issue here is we've got someone who's an expert in the field of personal finance and debt and trying to speak intelligently and in promoting themselves as an expert around whole life insurance, a cash value life insurance product, which there's a lot of moving parts that can be complex. We've got to break it down properly. So again, my advice here would be to do your due diligence, look at different options, see if it is a fit for us, whether it be cash value life insurance, term life insurance, mutual funds, real estate, how do I use them all together and put myself in the best position possible really by emulating and copying the ultra wealthy. So as always, I hope this helps. If you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out anytime and we'll talk to you soon. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.